You're watching Open House NYC. Now we're in Wilton, Connecticut at a unique estate with visual nods to both modernist and Japanese architecture. Dubbed the Lookout House with great reason, it's perched atop a hill with unobstructed views all the way to the Long Island Sound. And with skylights and walls of glass, a zen garden and expansive terraces and patios, the connection with the outside is ever-present, but it's the inside that truly stuns. We join the architect for a closer look at this over 9,500 square foot architectural gem. Hi, my name is Thomas Kligerman. I'm an architect and I'm sitting in a house I designed in Wilton, Connecticut. We call this house the, the Lookout House for very good reason. We can see from deep in Wilton, Connecticut all the way across Long Island Sound to Long Island. And it's really a blend of Japanese and Frank Lloyd Wright with a, sort of our, a dash of our own view of what architecture can be. So when you walk through the door, you're under a relatively low ceiling. So there's this feeling of kind of compression. And as you walk into the space, it suddenly opens up around you and you realize you're in this two-story high pyramid with an enormous skylight letting the daylight in. The pool is the heart of this house. In, in a lot of houses, it's the fireplace. But in this case, water is the center of the home. And every major function of this house rotates off of that pool. The kitchen, just sitting above it on a raised platform is the dining room. The far side of it is the living room. You have to walk around it to get to the other spaces, so it's, it actively plays a part, not only in the design of the house, but in how people actually use the house. The kitchen is unique because it is the one element that my firm didn't design. The design of the kitchen was done by Pininfarina, who is best known probably for his Ferraris and other car designs. The kitchen is spectacular because it's this amazing blue enamel, stainless steel, polished concrete. It's really this beautiful sort of piece of jewelry that's been set into this house. The dining is a wonderful space. One is an amazing view, but it also has this intimate scale. And the chandelier above it is like a constellation of stars, tiny little light bulbs that light up. So the only thing you need to make the meals even better than they already are is a great wine cellar. And we happen to have that in this house too. We designed the bedroom to be open and airy, but also to be private. And so to get there, you actually walk across a glass bridge like a synapse between the old part of the house and the new part of the house. The master bedroom suite, in a way, is, mimics the big space we're sitting in now. The whole suite is really one big volume, but what divides up the spaces is a block of walnut that sits in the middle, and that block of walnut is actually the closets. So the bedroom is on one side of that big box, and on the other side is the, is the master bathroom, and in it are all the clothes and drawers and things like that. One of the things that's great about the master bedroom suite is it has its own terrace. It's open on three sides, so you can sit out there in the morning, have a cup of coffee, or look at the stars at night, and feel very private, and, but very also connected to the landscape. Within the broad brush of this top of the hill landscape, there are many elements, almost little mini climates, if you will, little mini landscapes that you can use in different ways all around the property. If you're standing at the end of the outdoor pool and look down into the landscape, at the end of it you see a red clay tennis court disappearing into the trees. My intention in this house was to create something that was very modern, but also wasn't sterile and cold. So although the forms are crisp and clean, the materials we used are rich, stones and, and woods, things that make it feel like a house, not a museum. So thank you for coming by to visit today.